All right, guys, how exciting is this? I have a 2025 Ram 1500 Laramie and Bighorn. With the all new Hurricane engine, I'm gonna do a interior overview, exterior overview, and we're gonna do POV drives on each of these trucks. I'm gonna break this up into two videos, so let's get to this. All right, guys, how awesome is this? Several of us have been waiting for the new 2025 Ram 1500 for quite a while. At first, when you look at these trucks, you're like, I don't see a whole lot of difference. And it is subtle. It's a lot like the 24 F-150 refresh. Little different front bumper. You get a little different front grille. But really what's different on the 25 Ram 1500 is what's under the hood. So if we look at this truck right here, this is a Laramie 1500. This has got the standard output. I'm gonna go over the window sticker here in a second and we can kind of see some of the features. If we pan over to this truck, this is actually a Bighorn. In the half-ton truck segment, this has always been a very high-value truck. You get, a lot of times you get LEDs, you get the nicer looking wheels, you get some comfortable interior amenities, you get heated seats sometimes, typically not leather, but this is a really nice truck. Both these trucks have the standard output Hurricane engine. And today, I wanna to thank Dick Scott Motor Mall in Fowlerville, Michigan, for allowing me to do the review for this. I'm gonna put their information for both these trucks below if you're interested in buying these. Dick Scott's taken care of me and my family really well in the past, and I appreciate them letting me do the review for you guys today, where we can kind of see how this new Hurricane truck. All right, let's look at the side profile of this Laramie. It's got a really sharp looking wheel for this year. The side profile of the truck has not changed in the prior model year, but you will see some slight changes, new wheel design, Maybe a little bit different in the tail lights. You get the big Ram logo in the rear. I believe this has soft drop tailgate. Yes, it does. This has the LED box lighting. Very nice. And there are some other options you can add here as well. This one does not have the spray and bed liner, so you can put a Linex if you want. Another thing, it sounds silly, but another thing I like about the Ram, this is literally the easiest tailgate to put up. It has a really strong tailgate assist. This has the dual exhaust still. I like that they added that, and I believe that's standard across the lineup now if you get the Hurricane. You still got the two inch hitch, seven pin, four pin. This looks like this has LED license plate lights. Some of the others have went to halogen, which is a little disappointed. We look underneath as far as the rear suspension, it's still a five link suspension. So that is what gives these trucks such good ride quality. It's got some nice chrome exhaust tips. These are a 275 5520. And I believe this is an all season tire. Capless fuel cap, nice. I don't believe you can run E85 in these. All right, now let's look at the interior. First glance, you got a really nice door entry, soft touch everywhere. Got the Alcantara on the sides, good storage. Auto driver, passenger side. All right, now let's get into the window sticker. 2025 Ram 1500. If you see the base price, $63,880, but it's got a lot of really nice options. So you see, it's got the leather trim bucket seats for $1,295. Laramie Level 1 Equipment Group, which gets you rain sensitive windshield wipers, power tailgate release, for $395, as well as the wheel-to-wheel -wheel steps, 33-gallon tank, integrated brake controller for a grand total, $69,300. Fuel economy, this is an improvement over the Hemi. 19 combined, city 17, highway 24. Gonna be curious to see how this truck does today. Really excited to drive this inline six cylinder. I like the new front end on these trucks. It's kind of menacing how they made the grill a little wider and made the headlights a little thinner. I just think it kind of toughens up the front end. This model does not have the tow hooks on the front, LED fog lights. All right, let's pop the hood of this beast. So we got our battery on the side here, got your junction boxes. This does look like it has electric assist braking. Just kind of taking a look at that. The battery's huge in this thing. Wow, it's massive. Looking, it's got a really nice cover on the engine. I like how it says twin turbo, that's kind of cool. You got a little bit of clearance between the radiator and the motor, which is nice. You can see the exhaust getting sandwiched between the steering shaft and the side of the frame. Intake on this thing is huge. That is a massive intake. And I'm just wondering where it draws air from. Looks like it must pull from behind this because it does not come above the front. There's your coolant, and you also notice, pretty darn purple coolant. Powertrain's really nice and quiet. This does have the insulation on the hood, which is nice, and it says Ram. Another thing that's kind of cool, 1500 SST. Take a look at the braking, pretty good size rotors. This is a plastic liner. I actually prefer the plastic over the felt because they're easier to clean. I can see an E-coated frame in there, really nice. Look at our dampeners and their suspension. So this is an area where Ram is different than the Ford and the GM trucks got a coil rear suspension and you got a really nice wheel well liner in this and I think that's sort of standard I'm not seeing an option for that let's look at the front row 
Getting into the front, as usual, Ram does a great job in their interior. Soft touch everywhere, Alcantara on the sides there, or maybe we call it suede, but it is a really nice feeling. You got these foam holders for your cups. Some people wonder why they do this. I like it because when your cup doesn't jiggle around in a hard plastic area, I think this is a really smart move they do this. You carry the suede material through the lumbar support, stitched in Laramie. Seating controls on the side, little Ram logo here, looks nice. Okay, now we are in the Laramie interior. From 19 to 24, this looks pretty similar. This has been an area that I've always really liked on the Ram 1500s. I like number one, this little tray that moves back and forth is super cool. Plus you've got your wireless charging with a good spot and they even put this little spot for your cord to come through there if you're using any USB connections. Plus you got this little cubby hole here with your 400 watt, 110 volt, USB A and C. And then you got your huge storage here and then this goes below great storage here and this even gives you a little flip up storage there as well little measurement thing this has actually been on there since 2019 kind of a cool little thing got your cup holders two there looks like you've got two in each door so you got two four six eight ten and i'm sure two more there so you got what 14 or so got our headrests for your garage sunglass holder this has your Lighting you can turn on and off with the tailgate drop. Let's look at the glove boxes. One above, one below, very nice. The dash layout looks similar to the uh, 24 model year. They didn't have to make much of a change because it already looked pretty nice. Nice stitching, soft touch, good storage. Here's an area I really like that Ram has had for some years now. This is a great spot for a cigarette lighter or 12 volt. Let's say you have a backup camera for a trailer or any auxiliary thing you can put right here and you've got a charge connection here versus the wire running down the side of the dash. I like that. This truck has the auto driver and passenger side windows, two presets, powerful mirrors, which is really nice. Let's start this up and let's see what the sequence looks like. Very smooth, very quiet, I like that. Got the big 12 inch display. Ram brought this out a few years back. It's, it's really nice. It's got great resolution, especially in the backup camera. Instrumentation cluster, this looks pretty similar, but I actually really prefer this because me personally, I'm a fan of analog, TAC, and Speedo, but you've still got the digital readout in the middle where you can get all your good custom information, especially like your vehicle info. This is one of my favorites, and I feel like Ram does a great job here with all your temperatures, coolant. You can go through all this fun stuff. It's all right in front of you. Steering wheel. Looks pretty similar to the 24. Ergonomics, uh, everything looks the same there. You've got your lane keeping, lane assist, uh, adaptive cruise for the different settings for as how close you are to the vehicle in front of you. And now this is also a nice cool thing. You now have drive modes. I don't recall seeing that before. So I see tow, snow, sport, off-road, and auto. So that's kind of cool. Let's see what it does. So I see you get the little graphic display. That's auto. Let's see off-road, what does this look like? Just shows an image of off-road, traction control off, puts it in four-wheel auto. All right, now sport mode. Still keeps it in four auto, traction control off, and we'll put it in snow. I'm assuming still probably four auto. Yup, with a little picture animation of snow. And then an off-road, traction control off over there. Maybe it goes four lock, I'm not sure. Nope, still says four auto. So transmission controls. This has been in the same spot for a while. It's got the dial for the eight-speed transmission. I like you got two-wheel drive, four auto, four high, four low. Four auto to me is, is something I use quite a bit in the wintertime where you're on roads that are kind of dicey, but you're not entirely sure if you want to be in four high or not. This does have the start stop that you can turn on and off. That's nice. You can also turn off your lane keeping or what they call active lane management. I'm going to keep it on for this video. For your HVAC controls, so... You got your HVAC controls on the side of the screen, plus you've got it on the actual screen. So you can do it on the side or you can do it on the screen. We're gonna sync this. Got heated seats, heated steering wheel, and then I think you also have, yep, cooled seats. Oh, so you can turn on, that's cool. So if you want just your back, just your butt, or both, you can turn on individual heating and cooling. Very cool feature. So main home screen, so you got your maps above, and you can make this full screen, I like that. And then you've got a 3D imagery 
or you can just go above and they include fuel prices at local gas stations. That's kind of cool. And so this is where you can set up all your different features as far as home and work and trips and recent for your map settings. Go back to home. Here's the audio. You can go full screen there if you like. Sources, playing, browse. All the features seem pretty fast to react. I don't see anything glitchy or anything weird like that. It seems to be moving pretty quick. More of your HVAC controls. So this brings the touch menu version. I really like the zone feature. That's kind of cool. Dual climate control. Got your front sensors on or off. Got your integrated brake controller, traction control. Now let's see what we have for vehicle. So if we go to camera, let's go vehicle, mirror dimming. So you got your mirror dimming above. Here's all your different display options. You can go and change to auto or manual. That will go like bright. Moment of truth. Or dim if it's day or night. You can set different themes. That's kind of cool. Pretty customizable display. I like that. Now we go to apps. There's quite a few apps you can get. Obviously Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And there's some device manager changes you can play with. Here's some other things you can add. These are little shortcuts. I like this. There's a lot you can add here. A lot of customization, and this is where I feel like uh, Ram has done a great job. And then back to your nav. Lighting controls, you got your on, off, auto, and then you have your cargo lights, plus your fog lights, plus you can dim your instrumentation. This does have a manual telescoping up and down steering wheel. Radio controls. This is an area where I think Ram has done awesome. I think their steering wheel setup ergonomically is the best for just utilization. Steering wheel comfort, man, this thing feels great. Really nice soft leather, really nice looking stitching. It goes around the sides of this. As far as warmth, I don't feel any cold spots. It feels warm from top to bottom. Overall interior trim looks pretty decent. You can tell a lot of the same or similar theme to prior model years, but that's okay because Ram interior has been top notch for the past five years. So it's not like they really needed to make many changes. Put this in reverse now, let's take a look. The resolution on this thing's great. Obviously you get the guidelines that turn with this. This truck does not have the 360 cameras. Second row now. Carry the same theme from the front to the rear. This is almost like a, I don't know if I want to call it Alcantara or suede. Soft touch everywhere though. This is hard touch, but that's okay. Got your speaker grills there, two cup holders. Here's another area I love that Ram has is this storage in the bottom. Super cool, not new, they've had this for a while. Plus you can pull these things out and wash them. You could even make these coolers, I know people that do. Got some tie down hooks there. HVAC controls in the rear, USB A and C. Heated seats with a 400 watt, 110 volt. And you got a little cubby hole there if you wanna store some stuff. Here's an area Ram does really great. Notice the seat is forward. It's because you can recline it. How cool is that? Plus, you can pull it up and you've got pretty much a flat floor here. I mean, you've got this little wall just to section this off, but the flooring is flat. I like that. Overall, the leather in the second row looks really nice. This carries this like suede material through the back. Let's see what the cup holders look like. Here's another area I think Ram does great. This is a really nice cup holder area. You got storage in the rear, very nice. Sliding rear window, speakers in the headrest, airbags above, LED light there as well. Headrest, back of the seats look nice. This is definitely still a really top-notch interior. All right, let's go for a ride in this now. Gonna reset our fuel economy. Let's see how this truck drives. What's interesting is this truck says low fuel, but we're literally almost a quarter of a tank. I wonder if this is a new thing for Ram that they're just being extra cautious for people around uh, fuel. We're gonna get a little extra bonus footage today from when I normally do my MPG loops. For today, we're actually gonna be able to kind of do a little more spirited driving before I start my MPG loop. And so we'll be able to see how this thing compares to the Hemi. I've owned, gosh, I think I've owned four Hemi Ram 1500s, a 2500, and a Jeep Grand Cherokee with the Hemi. So I've got a lot of experience with the motor. The Hemi has been a good motor for a lot of people, but I think this new Hurricane is gonna be probably best in class if I had to guess. Got the crew settling in here, kind of seeing how the lane assist works. You can kind of feel it in the steering wheel and it kicks me over. I've got the settings at pretty low, so I could probably adjust that and make it a little more sensitive to both the lane centering. All right, let's start the drive loop. I just reset the fuel economy. I'm gonna reset our trip. 
and we've got an auto two-wheel drive everything's warmed up let's do it so this does have the start stop which is kind of nice some people like it some people don't i don't mind it you can turn it off if it bothers you i believe this has the eight speed transmission the zf eight speed which ram and chrysler has been running in their vehicles for gosh at least the last 10 15 years and it's been a phenomenal transmission i mean it's behind the hellcat trx high horsepower stuff pretty reliable you don't hear many people having issues with the zf eight speed transmission which is typically only behind the hemi hellcats and the eco diesel i think the standard six cylinder pinastar gets a chrysler eight speed transmission first impressions this truck rides and drives really nice. You can feel, I don't know how to explain this, you can tell it's not a Hemi because it's so quiet. You don't hear that throatiness of the V8. It just accelerates without a lot of noise. It feels very EcoBoost-like, no surprise. Twin turbo, six cylinder engine, just like Ford's EcoBoost. I like the ergonomics in this truck. You know, the elbows and where I place everything, it just is a very comfortable truck to drive. I also have always been happy with how the Ram trucks ride and drive down the road. That coil suspension in the rear, I think makes the truck ride and drive a little bit better than some of the other competitive trucks in the market. The downside to the coils in the rear is they typically squat a little bit more when you put a little payload behind them. I'm spoiled personally by coil rear suspension trucks for the last three years and Raptors and they're just, they just ride and drive so nice. Layout in here, this 12 inch display looks really nice. All the gauges, all the steering wheel controls, everything feels really nice. I don't see any issue there. It's very familiar to the 19 to 2024 Ram 1500 trucks. There's not much different in that regard from 25. All of this, to me, I'm not seeing a difference. It's more the exterior fascia outside and this whole new powertrain under the hood. Let's see how the eight speed behind the Hurricane feels. We're in auto drive mode today. I didn't see an eco mode. That just looks to be the most appropriate for fuel economy. That fuel gauge kind of drives me crazy that it says it's low fuel, but I'm literally just under a quarter tank of gas. I'm accelerating, pretty good clip. I'm at like 1800 RPMs, now 1500. Pretty smooth. I, I like how quiet this thing is. This is another area where I think Ram's done a great job for the past five years is their interior road noise. It's just so quiet. It'll be interesting comparing it to the Bighorn and see if there's more sound deadening insulation in the interior of the Laramie versus the Bighorn. So I am going to set the speed to 70 miles an hour, just like we did the other trucks. Lane centering or lane keeping system is on. We have our adaptive cruise that's also on. A little bit windy out today. So this truck steers and, and tracks really well going down the road. Every time I get into a half ton truck, I just realize how much nicer they ride and drive versus my Ram 2500. But this thing is a really nice driving truck. You could get in and drive to across the country without any issue here. I like the soft touch on the top of the door here. This is nice and comfortable. The seats are comfortable. I wish they had massaging seats. Just kidding. I think you can get that on like the tungsten trim model. But man, this is a really nice driving truck. This is also a nice little finish up here too. It's almost like some sort of like, I don't know what you call it, like that weave pattern. We got the air set at auto 71, I believe, or 72 degrees. Yep, 72. This truck does not have heads up display. I want to look and see what package you have to get to add heads up display. It's holding eighth gear without an issue going up the hill and it's going to be interesting we've got wind today coming out of the west so right now it's kind of in our face a little bit it'll be interesting when we make the return trip how the fuel economy compares i like the mirrors on the ram the cutout in the corner makes the mirrors a lot easier to use i wish all the manufacturers had that steering comfort really good road noise good i'm hands-free at the moment i think this is kind of keeping like a lane centering but i haven't turned yet so i'm going to be curious to see what it does nope did not engage i gotta look in the settings and see if the lane assist setting is on it says vibration and steering assist is on let's put steering assist at high i like how you can also adjust this going down the road okay so we're at the halfway point now this truck is a real pleasure to drive that's for sure makes good power underneath 3000 rpms 
the thing I like always about these boosted engines is they just don't have to rev up to make power. It's just a more relaxed driving experience. I like that. You know, another thing that's kind of funny too, going from a Raptor to a regular half ton, especially the Ram with the five link rear suspension on 20s, man, this thing feels like a sports car of the handling versus my versus my Raptor. So this is a really nice truck, drives nice. I could definitely see owning one of these trucks at some point. Typically when a manufacturer comes out with a new motor, especially when they're going from a V8 to an inline six cylinder, or a V6 twin turbo. A lot of people have resistance to that and I get it. You know, V8s have been around for 100 years and people like them and they're very effective. But I'm also not against new technology. I think these new engines are pretty darn efficient and I like how they make power. They just, they do it in a really efficient manner. To me, I think I'd rather have this over the Hemi personally just because I like the low end power. The Hemi did not have that low end power that this motor is gonna make. All right, let's go through some of the uh, vehicle information. So right now going down the road, we are at 205 degrees coolant temp, trans temp 181. The oil temp's at 201, oil pressure's at 22. So the last sort of incline, also a bumpy road, it's taking the bumps really good. Never on this drive on the highway is it had to come out of eighth gear overdrive. 70 miles an hour, I'm sitting right, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say 1,850 RPM range. I'm trying to guess because I see the 1,750 mark and it's just above that. I'm gonna do the deer selector here and downshift and see if how much engine braking we get. I'd say very similar to the EcoBoost. Man, and it will really let you rev it out too. Also, I kind of like how you can adjust the gears right from the steering wheel right there, which is kind of nice. Once again, nice acceleration under 2,400 RPMs. Actually, right now we're accelerating up a slight grade and still under 2,000 RPMs. Here's another thing I like. I like how it shows obviously your oil life reset, but oil level, it's kind of cool. So you don't even have to check the dipstick if you don't want to. You can see how much oil's in the engine right from your gauges. That's a great feature. Running about 40 PSI in all four of the tires. Start stops engage, pretty smooth uh, disengagement there. So for your avid Ram guy, you've had Hemis, you've liked them, but you're like hesitant on the Hurricane. I get it. No, totally get it. It's been a tried and true motor but I'm pretty impressed by this thing so far. And luckily, Ram didn't change that much in the powertrain department, except the engine. Here's what I mean. Transfer case is the same. I believe the rear axle is the same. Transmission's the same. They might've changed the transmission tuning to work with the Hemi, but that's a tried and true great transmission. And considering how many years Ram had in development with this engine, I don't know, I wouldn't feel nervous about this engine at all personally. Hemis were known a little bit with some valve train issue here and there, but not that much. We've camped with a bunch of people that have the 6.4 Hemis in their HD trucks with 150,000 problem-free miles in those trucks. So generally speaking, I feel like those Mopar engines are pretty solid. I've not seen anything on this trip as far as anything that made me feel like I'm hearing a weird valve train noise, weird shifting, fluttering, anything. Everything on this thing has felt great so far. Question's gonna be, is the low end power, does the highway fuel economy, does the maintenance, reliability, fuel economy, does it provide a better value than the Hemi? That's what we're gonna see. And I'm curious also how the Bighorn is gonna drive and ride compared to the Laramie. All right, we're gonna pull in and finish up our loop now. Curious to see what kind of fuel economy we get. Moment of truth, 17.8 miles, 18.1 miles per gallon. Not too bad. So I would have liked to have seen maybe two miles per gallon better, but we do have a few things not going great for us today. It is a little bit windier than when I've done these loops in the past. And I don't know the difference on as far as when it's raining out for fuel economy versus not rain. It's not a heavy rain, it's a light rain, but that could also have an impact. So I don't think that's a terrible first result for doing the Hurricane. Just finished the drive review with the Hurricane in the Laramie. Now we're gonna go do the exact same loop with a Bighorn, but with the Pinnastar Hybrid. And let's see how they compare in fuel economy power, transmission, shifting, overall feel of the vehicle. Interested in any of these three trucks today that I videoed, I'll put contact information below.
I hope you enjoy this video on the 2025 Ram 1500s. Thanks for watching.